Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look at Day 5 of the Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So we'll hop right in today with the scores from today's game. Starting off with a 6-2 victory for Sweden over Japan. And this was a game that was dominated by the Swedes throughout the entire game, really, when we looked at it. I mean, Japan had their looks early, couldn't really capitalize. And from there on out, you know, Sweden took the reins and really sort of took it to Japan. Japan really never looked to be in this game and they had some chances but at the end of the day not enough and really the end result there is pretty evident of what that game looked like in my opinion at least we think back to that opening night for Japan where they couldn't beat China and they ended up losing in a shootout that ended up being a major major factor on team Japan and, they, and they've really struggled to find their way since then and we'll take a look at it here in just a little bit but they are looking like they might end up in relegation but we will talk about that in just a couple minutes here we're going to move through the scores pretty quickly because there wasn't too much to talk about in, in that one so all the Canada 5 nothing over the Czechs Canada looked really really good today with the exception of with about five minutes left in the second period that was pretty much the only blemish on the Canadian game the Czechs just got absolutely handled today not too much to talk about in that one you know the Czechs had a good little window that they played but at the end of the day Canada played their game today looked really really good if they can play like that for those 55 minutes they will have no problem against the U.S. but of course that remains to be seen as they will play tomorrow so well, we'll take now a look at the game of the day really when we look at it between Denmark and China and coming into this game the storyline was if China can win in any fashion they would relegate both Denmark and Japan they did not they lost in a shootout but of course you know when we look at it when the game goes into overtime in a shootout it's anybody's game China tied the game up late Denmark when they, and there was really a back and forth game all game long just at the end of the game you know about a minute left in the third China put in the tire tire and then from there on out it was just Tight checking game, overtime didn't settle it. Shootout came down to, I believe it was the fourth or fifth round. And, you know, that really did it. And when we look at it, big win for Denmark. They will stay alive for now. Obviously, there's still plenty of plenty of hockey st to be played, but for now, they will stay alive. And we'll take now a look at the news. So we have do or die for Japan. We'll talk about that in a bit. Eyes on B1, which is the top spot in Group B. They will play Germany for it tomorrow, which will be a big, big game, especially when we look at it. You never want to play a team like Canada or the U.S. When you could play a team like a Finland, a Switzerland, or a Czechia, but that, of course, still remains to be seen there. Yeah, as well, we'll take now a look at the Czechs with time to regroup. You know, they've had a, a rough couple games since their opening game against Finland. See if they can regroup, come back at it stronger than ever against the Swiss. That still remains to be seen. As well, 55 out of 60 minutes, you know, is how well Canada played today. That's about 91.6%. It's amazing what happens when you calculate it. They really need to play a 100% game, though, if they are going to have, be able to beat a team like the U.S., who are going to capitalize on any shortcomings of, of however you play, right? When we look at it, every team that's played the U.S. has started off really strong against them, and the U.S. has sort of built their way up. If Canada gives them a window, they're going to take advantage of that. So for Canada, you have to shut them down for all 60 minutes if you want a shot at beating the U.S. as well. Oh, so close for China. They were... You know, they were so they were this close to making it to the quarterfinals. And now they have to play yet another game against a really, really tough German team that we've seen. We'll see if they'll be able to do that. That'll be on Tuesday. As well for Germany, they're staying alive, staying alive, right? When we look at it, big deal for, for Denmark, rather, to be able to stay alive in this tournament for one more game. You know, they, they have the ability to make their way. They have to sort of rely on Germany to help them out a little bit in that game against China. But at the end of the day, when we look at it, right, Denmark stayed alive for one more one more game at least. So hats off to them for doing that. As well, it was the Women's World Championship Game 500 today. The 500th game ever in world, Women's World Championship history. So a big deal in the IHF today. So pretty big news, right? When we look at it, obviously it's been a tournament that's come a long ways from when it started to now. And, you know, we look at it, we have a team like the Czechs, the Finns, the Swiss, who really any of those teams could be the team like Canada and the U.S. where whole bunch of years ago probably not not ever thought of, of happening but with that of course moving along here now to the standings for group a we have canada and the u.s both in first place with nine points the czechs are in third place with three switzerland and finland both in fourth and fifth switzerland with two regulation losses as well as finland with three regulation losses as well now group b and this is where it'll get interesting we'll talk about the what if scenarios 
just after this. But for now, we'll take a look at it. So Sweden with nine points in, for, in first place. Germany in second place with six points. We have China in third place with three. Denmark in, in fourth with two points. And lastly, Japan in last place. Now let's take a look at the what if scenarios. When we take a look at it, remember, so how this is going to work when in terms of tiebreakers is first off, it's points. They create a little subgroup. If you're tied up in a three-way tie, they create a subgroup. So it's just the three teams between uh, Japan, Denmark, and China. It comes down to points within the group. If, for example, if by some miracle here, you know, China finds a way to win every win their game against Germany in regulation. The game's over. Uh, J Denmark and Japan will both be relegated. As well, now we'll sort of jump through the what if scenario. So if Denmark wins and China loses in any fashion, reg uh, regulation, overtime, shootout, whatever it might be, if Denmark can win their game and China can lose, and China loses their game, both China and Japan will be relegated. China, the China basically has this under control. If they can win in regulation against Germany, all these games are going to be on Tuesday. If they can beat Germany. They're through no matter what. Japan and Denmark will both be relegated. If Japan wins in regulation and China loses in regulation, then China and Denmark will both be relegated as well. Now let's talk about the overtime scenarios. And this is a key one because what it will come down to is when we look at it, goal differential, if you know Japan makes it to overtime and wins, then no matter what happens, all teams will be with will have goal differential of zero when they're playing each other. So then what happens is it moves to goals four between the three teams. And right now, when we actually take a look at it, we have China with four goals four. And we think about it, the 3-2 victory over Japan, as well as the 2-1 the loss to Denmark today. That's a key to take note of because when we look at it, one goal won't do it for Japan. Two goals won't do it for Japan because remember when we look at it, if it's a 2-1 a two one shootout overtime victory for Japan, then when we see China, once again, remember four and four, who has the tiebreaker there? It becomes a second subgroup and China has beat Japan, so they have that tiebreaker, which means that Japan, in order to move on, would have to win if they're going to have that overtime scenario with China regulation loss. They'd have to win by three three goals, like they, Japan puts in three goals or more in order to move on to the quarterfinals, stay out of relegation, stay in Group A, or sorry, Division A, like that top division for one more year. Time, of course, will tell. That's on Tuesday, so not too much to worry about here. I decided to put it in this video. I was going to put it in, in tomorrow's video, but I thought, you know, let's get this done with today. It's a big, big deal here, uh, especially in Group B. Remember, the bottom two teams kicked out of the tournament. No shot at coming back in. You know, when we look at it, relegation, normally there's a game, right? Normally you have two teams that are playing in the Women's World Championship. There's no game, which means if you can't make it out of the top, can't make those top three teams in Group B, you're gone. You have no more shots. So for Japan and Denmark, you know, they're sort of at the reins of Germany in this one. It'll be very interesting to see what goes on there. So that's all we have for the what-if scenarios. Remember, th any overtime ones, we sort of see three goals or more for Japan. means Japan moves on. Otherwise, China will move on. And then, of course, you know, we look at if China wins in regulation, nothing like it's just impossible for any other team to move up. So China will move on there. But now let's take a look at tomorrow's games. And this is going to have a little bit more impact on the on the topper end of the standings. We have Sweden and Germany coming up at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. rather Eastern Daylight Time. This will be the sort of the, the, the decider, in my opinion, of that top matchup in Group B. Who's going to win that B1? Who's going to be that top team in Group B and going to get to play the easier opponent in Group A? My opinion is probably going to be the Swedes. The Swedes have looked really good at this tournament. But nonetheless, that's going to be one of the games of the day, as well as Finland and Switzerland. That'll decide sort of that fourth and fifth, in my opinion, and maybe even third when we look at it, spot in Group A. So that's a really, really crucial game as well for the Group A standings. And lastly, it's a great game. It's everyone's favorite game. It's the U.S. and it's Canada, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Highly recommend. That's my game of the day personally can never go wrong with the game between the U.S. and Canada. And so, I mean, what more is there to say aside from it is time for everyone's favorite period. It is time for a question time. And when we look at it, we have one question today coming to you, brought to you by Double IHF Geek, who says, do you think Canada will win gold this year? And in my opinion, I see no reason why they can't. You know, when we look at it, 
they're a solid, solid team. You know, they they if we, they can play anything like they did today in that 55 minutes against the Czechs, they, I see no reason why. The biggest problem for Canada so far at this tournament has been consistency. If they can find their game for all 60 minutes, my opinion, the U.S. doesn't stand a shot. Normally, the U.S. has that skill that can sort of bail them out. But from what I've seen in this tournament so far, I just don't think they have the skill compared to previous years where normally they can outskill Canada in that respect. I don't see it. So if they can't, if Canada can play their game, I see no reason why they can't win gold. And if you have any questions that you want answered, be sure to draw, uh, sort of leave us a comment on Twitter. On the fly, fifteen fifteen is our handle. So with that, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you realize you're subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on day five of the Women's World Championship. Until next time, see you.